one of the biggest problems in Magic, uh, especially in Commander, is shuffling, right? So you go out of your way to buy sleeves to protect your cards. Well, how can you shuffle them properly? I'm going to first show you a couple versions of shuffling that are actually not very random. Uh, one of them is pile shuffling, where you, you know, one, two, three, four, you see people do this. Whenever I see people do this at Commander or anything else like that, I always get really nervous because this isn't really randomized. Uh, one of the things of, you know, true randomization is you shouldn't be able to reverse it, right? But if I take each of these and put this back on top like this, I can actually undo the entire process of shuffling. In order for Magic to be a fair and fun game, you want to make sure that everything is completely random. Pile shuffling is good if you want to, like, do that and then do some shuffling. So, you know, I pile shuffled, and then I want to go in and, you know, do a couple riffle shuffles or things like that. But the problem with riffle shuffling is you usually want to let your opponents shuffle. And if somebody did this to my cards and I didn't know them or trust them, I would be afraid of them, you know, really taking my cards and severely bending them. Right? That would be a major, major problem for me as a Magic player. Um, now, this is called Mash Shuffling. And this is one of the ways that I think is one of the easiest ways to learn and a way to get really good at it. And if you get good and you're gentle with the cards, you're never going to destroy them. You're never going to damage them. The only theoretical wear on these cards is on the sleeves. But the thing is, if you double sleeve your cards, even if you wear a freaking hole through the sleeves, it's okay because, well, I have a secondary sleeve attached, right? So that's the way that I prefer to shuffle things. Uh, people get nervous because you are literally taking the corners of cards and pressing them hard against each other. But what people don't realize is these sleeves are kind of built like that. Um, these sleeves have a build where... And this is any sleeves, really, uh, as long as you take a look at them. But if you look at these very carefully, they have a very, very fine edge here. So it's kind of like an oval shape. So when you take a series of cards and press them against each other, they are naturally just going to fall into the rivets. And if you lift up and down a little bit and you give them a little encouragement, see how they're just like every other and they're just completely going through? That's some pretty decent randomization. Now... In larger packs, there is also some imperfections when you do that, right? If I run this, look, there's two cards here going in to one. So it's even harder to trace or de-randomize or things like that when you're casually pressing these into each other. Uh, mass shuffling is great. It's seen as a very, very uh, fluid way of doing it. However, there are some warnings. But before I go over the warnings, I just want to show you how to learn to do that. Because if you grab... 99 double sleeve cards and you start trying to mash shuffle without ever doing it before you're going to damage and bend cards and you're going to also bend the corners of your sleeves and it's going to be problematic right if you just take two densely packed sets of cards and just grind them against each other and push them you're going to really cause some damage but if you look at the corners right these are all still in pretty darn good shape now sleeves don't last forever that's why we use them they're a temporary shield uh, but in general, I've probably shuffled this deck probably close to two or three thousand times, uh, you know, two or three thousand sessions of this, and the sleeves are still in stellar condition because I know how to do it, all right? Now, how do you get to that point? Well, don't start with 99. Start with like 30, 40, 20, however many you need. Take a small amount and just use it to learn the mechanics. And don't put your valuable cards in here yet. Go take some basic lands and sleeve them up and learn how to do this, all right? Take a small amount and just very gently, you know, take the, the bottom corner. If you take the top corner, you run into some issues where uh, you can get cards actually stuck inside of each other. And then if you pull them out, you can break the, the like seal on them. So you always want to start from the bottom, put it into the corner. And notice how I'm also holding these cards loosely. If I hold them tight together, they basically turn into a solid wall. But if I loosen them, and if you can get even a little bit more creative, you can put your thumb on them resting after they've expanded. And on this side, I kind of maybe pull a little bit out just to encourage it. Look how easy they fall in. All right, I'll show you again. Take any size, and they very carefully weave into each other. Now, if you can convince me that you can track where these cards are going in a 99 
card deck or even a 60 card deck, I would be very, very impressed because it's not just that these cards are hitting, you know, every single one you can calculate it. Sometimes there's like five cards on this side, one card on this side, or other times a whole pile goes into another pile. If you can track that, I mean, you know, goodness, you are very impressive with your eyes and how you can track information. What I suggest doing, grab 60 sleeves or 100 sleeves or whatever you need, um, take them, and when you're sitting in front of TV, you know, just, just very casually, not even looking, just lightly get them to work. Once you feel comfortable where you can seamlessly cut and cut and mash, cut and mash, cut and mash, over and over and over again, add a few more cards. Take a small amount, 10, 5, 3, I don't know, however many you want, put them in, and then put them into the mix. You'll notice it's a little bit more difficult because you're dealing with a larger object, but overall, it becomes really, really easy to plug these in to each other, all right? All right, feeling confident with that, I'll take another piece. Once you start getting to larger amounts is where you start slipping up and making uh, mistakes with it. And sometimes you may even be sitting down one night watching TV, just kind of doing this casually, and the next day, you might not be able to work on that same pile. Reduce. Go back and train the skill. This is not something that you just magically figure out to do how to do by watching a YouTube video, right? You want to do this very, very carefully, and you want to build the skill. Like anything else, it requires skill to do so. Much like when you see people who have seven cards in hand, and, you know, they do this. This took a long time for me to figure out how to do, right? It's also kind of rude. This is kind of really rude to do while your opponent's playing if you're going through your cards. But when you draw your seven in the beginning, it's kind of a cool little impressive thing, signaling like, hey, I'm pretty good with cards. Like I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you can read through them to see what each card does, all right? It's a skill that takes a lot of time to build up. But when you get really good at it, you will eventually be able to handle all of this. And now let's say, I don't know, your hands are smaller, your hand muscles are weaker, you're not really good at this, you don't feel comfortable doing this. Well, you can kind of do a fusion of this plus pile shuffling. Let's say I can only shuffle half. All right, well, I will shuffle half seven times. Five, six, that's probably seven. Pile, pile, pile. And then I'll put some here, some here, and some here. Go into this one. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. I'll shuffle four times. I'll shuffle this four times. All right, I'll shuffle this four times. See how I'm really like just making this stuff completely random? And then I can pile, pile, pile. That's about half, all right. We can run this, shuffle that together three times. Put these piles together. And then even what I can do is ask my opponent, would you like either pile on top or would you like me to, you know, just do this, right? This is pretty random. You can also ask your opponent to do it, ask your opponent to cut it, ask your opponent to choose you when to stop and switch piles, you know, whatever you want to do if you're new at it. Uh, give them a little bit of agency. But eventually, you will get into this level of, you know, being able to shuffle. Now, will this be perfect? No. You're not going to be perfect at this. you got to shuffle a lot before you get really, really good at, like, mash piles, uh, mash shuffling like this, all right? Now, the other thing I want to talk about, and this is the big thing about shuffling your deck. If you keep doing this, let me know if you see the problem emerging, all right? You can keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, all right? Yeah, I'm doing all the shuffling, and this is also something to look out for when you play against people who might be cheating. Right? I'm cheating right now. This chunk of cards has not changed. Right? Let's put the Myth Unbound as the top card. All right, it's on the top, right? right here. I can shuffle this as much as I want, and it really looks like I am shuffling the cards. I am. I'm shuffling all the bottom cards. That top set of cards hasn't changed at all. All right, after a bunch of shuffles, hey, look, it's still there. Right. So when you shuffle, this is also a courtesy, is you want to make sure all of your cards get moved all over the place. So first shuffle, somewhere in the middle, right? So they all get mixed together. Next shuffle, I want to take it so my top cards and my bottom cards interact. 
and they're getting pushed into the middle. See, now I have no idea what this top card could be. And then I can repeat that. I can even take it so all of my bottom pile goes into all of my top pile. And then I can make it so all of my top pile goes into all of my bottom pile. And this just keeps happening over and over again. In the middle, all right, get tops and bottoms, put the bottom pile into the middle, put the top pile into the middle. If you keep doing that, you are actually truly randomizing these cards. And, uh, you know, it's a situation where no card or cluster of cards will likely be with each other. Uh, and this, you know, is how I really, really gain confidence that my deck is thoroughly shuffled, all right? And this is also a situation where your opponents will appreciate it because you are actually giving them a randomized game. Um, you know, and the other thing is, notice how the bottoms of my cards are facing away. I'm kind of giving my opponents information if they look at my deck while I'm shuffling it, but I also want to keep this away from my eyes. You know, if you are shuffling like this, I can keep looking for stuff as I want. Ooh, Lightning Greaves, I want that. I can put that on the top, and now I'm cheating, right? Because then I can just keep doing this, where I keep leaving those cards on the top, Shuffle, 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 you know, put the bottom into the middle, put most of the top in, see how quick and, you know, crafty I was with that, and oh, look at that, lightning griefs on the top. It's bad to do that, it's unethical, especially in Commander, it's a fun format. Um, and also, when your opponents ask you to shuffle for them, you can do something like this, or what you can do is, you know, just... Do the standard cut like you know you do for your opponents um you know some people like to just kind of like progressively bring the pile down like that that's a fine way to do it as well you can also ask them you know may i take the top half and just quickly you know mash them into each other or something like that you know you want to be respectful of their cards don't do this with other people's cards unless you feel completely safe i did this with somebody's cards they didn't know that i was good at it once i did this they yelled at me and they said oh my god you're gonna bend my cards and i said no 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 look they all fall very nice and neat together. Like, I'm not trying to ruin your cards. I'm not trying to damage them. I'm just trying to make sure that there is a real, like, rigid or riffly shuffle going on here, right? Because that is just untraceable with cards. All right, so I hope this was a, a nice video. Uh, I made a video about this a while back, but I wanted to add some more information, more insights, and things like that. So... If you have any questions or you need any additional help with this, don't be afraid to reach out. Uh, if you can show me a video of what you're trying to do and what the issue is, I can always take a look and try to help guide you to do better shuffling. Uh, shuffling is a responsibility of Commander. You owe your opponents a fair and fun game. Best way to do that, completely randomize your cards. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's no way to tell if it's actually random, but this whole deck was actually pretty... Uh, pretty darn organized because I just got done doing a tech deck on this. So uh, check out my channel if you want to see some tech decks on commander cards. But anyway, I hope this was helpful. I hope this was insightful and I hope you have a great day. Later.